Look at those great patterns. Those are just super, ooh, those are good too. In this tutorial in After Effects, we're gonna repeat the repeater and make these terrific psychedelic backgrounds. It's a lot of fun, I really enjoyed it, and uh, it's pretty easy. So let's uh, stop my repeating myself and we'll get into it. Here in After Effects, we're gonna be creating patterns using the repeater twice. Now you can use the repeater as many times as you want, I'm just gonna do it twice, but this is the theory and practice of repeating the repeater to make a whole lot of repeated patterns. I said repeater a lot, but you know, it doesn't matter because that's kind of the theme of the tutorial. First, make a new composition, all right? This is called Comp 2. It is HD TV 1080, 24 frames a second. None of that matters, except when I start calling out values, just remember they are relative to my frame size. I'm gonna make a new solid, make a background. Um, you know, not very saturated. Yeah, that's fine. That's a really gross looking green. Now, I'm gonna make a new shape layer. You make a shape layer by going new shape layer. You can just uh, double click up here. I need a rectangle, so I'm just gonna double click on that. All shape layers come with the fill and stroke of the last time you used a shape layer. I don't know what I was doing that required these settings, but I'm sure it was pretty great. Here in the rectangle, uh, we have within contents, and then within the group called Rectangle 1, we have Rectangle Path 1, a stroke, a fill, and transform options for that group. What I'm going to do is first go into the rectangle here, and I'm going to unlink these, and then set this to be a square. So that is now a square. Wicked. I'm knocking this out of the park. Now I'm going to take the fill here, and I'm going to set it to no fill, so it's just the stroke. And then I'm going to change the stroke here to be... Um, Maybe less saturated, maybe more brighter, I don't know. I guess we're going for a merry toothpastey Christmas here, so let's stick with that. Okay, cool. Some nice muted tones. And now we're going to set some keyframes. So the keyframes I'm interested in setting are going to be about the size of this thing. So I want it to be a square that goes from zero, and then one, two, and then maybe 30 frames later, we're at, uh, I don't know, 150 large. That works for me. What we're doing is basically we are setting a keyframe at the beginning and then we move ahead, set keyframe at the end. That's keyframing and uh, that is that. So the rectangle is growing in size. What I'd also like it to do is for the stroke, uh, stroke width to be changing. So at the end I want the stroke width to be zero and oddly enough at the start I want the stroke width to be zero. So I'm setting keyframes there. And then in the middle, I uh, like the stroke width to be like 50. So it's uh, getting larger and then smaller. So it looks kind of like that. I'm going to take all these keyframes. I'm going to easy ease them by hitting F9, or you can go animation, keyframe assistant, easy ease, whatever, however you want to do that, I don't care. Then we're going to go into the graph editor here, click on the size, select those and give them a different curvature to how that looks. So we're taking the handles, the influence handles of this keyframe here, we're dragging them this away towards the beginning to create a different look to the motion. Cool. And then the stroke width, I'm going to select those keyframes, you know, and then we're going to take this keyframe and we're going to change it to be one of these types of keyframes. And then we're just going to move it a little bit this way. All right. So that's uh, looking neat, I think. Bleep. I'm going to drag this handle out like so. I'm trying to make this smoother. There we go. So we're smoothing that out. Cool. I think that looks, looks better than it did before. I mean, it's not great, but it's okay. So anyway, that's a square. It's doing some stuff. Cool. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, take that rectangle, and I want to repeat that rectangle. So I'm going to go add a repeater. Boom. So the repeater is now repeating everything above it, meaning it's repeating everything in this rectangle. Okay, so that's that's working out for me. Now I need to change the properties of that repeater. So for example, I want, you know, way more copies. You know, I want them to be transforming a little bit differently like this, perhaps. So I want them to be, you know, spaced out more. And the offset, it'll say which of these is the original. So I'm going to set that to minus 5 and copies 11, which means out of 11, you know, minus 5, it puts the middle back in the middle. Cool. So what that repeater does is it repeats everything, including the animations. So that's good. And it repeats everything above it. So if we change something about the rectangle, for example, the transform in here, we're able to change the rotation of these. 
to be like this. So we'll put that at 45 degrees, everything is now changed to look like a pretty ugly sweater. So that's pretty cool. I mean, I'm into this look, I'm into ugly sweaters. I wear ugly sweaters when it's not even Christmas, you know? I just call them sweaters. So I want that position to be, you know, kind of like this right at the edge. Boom. Cool, cool, cool. So I'm feeling, feeling how that's going. Great. So we've got the one repeater working just fine. We're going to duplicate that repeater. We go into its properties and we're going to basically take 215, change the zero, then change the zero here to 215. So that is creating an array like this. So, whoa, look at all of that. That's, that's getting crazy. So there is a lot of stuff going on there and uh, super good. So you get the idea. What this is gonna do is create an array of things that are all happening at the same time. So you can kind of get the idea of how we did that transition, right? So we've got this rectangle, which is a stroke. I'm gonna duplicate it. I'm gonna hit uh, U, which brings up its keyframes. I'm gonna grab those keyframes and I'm gonna move them, you know, ahead like this so that it's, you know, it's like it's happening twice kind of thing. Uh, maybe I just want to move those like this a little bit. Cool. Now, I want to make sure that I'm adding a fill, or at least I'm putting fills in here for rectangle 2. So we go to the fill, make sure it's a solid fill color of some kind. You know, let's give it to cheerful holiday tones or whatever. So, la 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 la, holidays. Something, something, holidays. All right, maybe like that, I don't really know. Okay, so that comes up, and there we go. It ends looking like uh, really the ugliest tablecloth that you have ever seen in your life. Wicked. So if we want this pattern to tile this whole thing, there are a few things you need to change. In rectangle 2, the final position, we need everything to be touching. So. You might need to just jack up the size a little bit here, like this. Okay, that's pretty good. 152 might do it, maybe 153. I don't know. In this case, uh, exact numbers are not as important as uh, filling in all of the gaps. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this. And with this duplicated layer, I'm going to move it over so that it fills up the space in between all right, so I'm just going to be shifting this over. I'm using the nudge in the uh, the wonderful keyboard commands here to make sure, there we go, this seems accurate. Cool. So now when you watch it back, what do we got? Wow, whoa, whoa, wowie zowie. That's, uh, that's pretty crazy. There's some crazy stuff happening right there. Um, that's how I do it anyway. I mean, you could use repeaters to accomplish all of this within the same layer, if you so desire. But I like to do it on two layers, then I can easily just like push them apart like this. And then we have well, really a lot more undulating. And it's really hurting my brain to stare at that. It's kind of like an optical illusion kind of thing. Like it's, I feel like it's warping, but I know mathematically that's not what's happening. Anyway, this is what happens when you have a lot of moving patterns and stuff going on, but that is the basics of how to create a repeater that repeats along a grid in this way. And you know, you can use it to create, you know, some pretty dicey animations. You create one animation, repeat it horizontally, second repeater, repeat it vertically. Anyway, what if you want to do like the radial repeating thing that I also showed in the intro? So this is part two, the first one was about grids and whatever, and this one is going to be uh, making that circle thing. So I went, I made a new shape layer, it had a circle on it, so let's just uh, double click on the ellipse thing up here, you know, set it to start right around here, that's cool. Uh, we have an ellipse, go to the ellipse, we're going to take the uh, stroke here, we don't need it, goodbye stroke. The fill here, we need it to be, you know, let's do like a white, like this. Okay, cool. That's neat. And the size of this thing, it's going to start at zero, 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 zero. Cool, cool. Uh, link those up. Size and position are what are going to be changing. And these are going to be going from size zero up to a size 150 or 100 or something. and. I'm going to negative 250. Lots of fun. Select all those, hit an F9 to uh, easy ease them. Go to the graph editor, grab those graphs, pull down graphs. Cool. So 
Singularly, it looks like this. All right, that's, that's neat, I guess, if you're into that sort of thing. All right, whatever. Then we're gonna add a repeater to that, okay? What does that repeater do? Well, it's gonna have, you know, eight copies. It's transform, we're gonna go to zero, and then da 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 to rotation, 360 divided by eight, meaning a perfect circle of them, cool. And what does that look like? Well, that means that that first thing that we did is then going to be repeated a whole bunch of times. So it looks like this, all right, so far so good. Now we add another repeater to it. So let's repeat that repeater, boom. Now, the first time we repeated the repeater, ugh, it's getting annoying to say. Anyway, the first time we repeated it, we went translation, translation, right? This time we are not. Let's do eight copies again, and uh, let's go into the transform here, and uh, no, no position. Let's do scale instead. So you see how they go, whoa, crazy, that's so wacky, so wacky what it's doing. When you do this, the scale of each one, so the next iteration is 70% of the first iteration, then the next iteration is 70% of that. So it creates this uh, kind of zooming effect. Okay, now we have the scale going on, let's also have the rotation going on. Just a little bit to create this wacky spiral. Hoo-hoo, <laughs> that is wacky. All right, let me touch it up to look kind of like that. Okay, cool, cool. So, now we need to animate that repeater. So we're gonna animate the scale and the rotation. So here at the end, that's how we want them to be. And at the beginning, we want the scale to be 100 and the rotation to be zero. So when that comes out, it's like they're growing out of these. Now we just need to make sure that these have the same kind of animation as everything else. So let's go like that and wow. Boom, cool, cool, cool. The other thing we did was that we changed the uh, opacity of those things so that, you know, the ones in the back are not as opaque as the other ones. And then the other thing to do is to give this a little rotation. So give it a rotation here at the end of negative uh, 90 and at the beginning a rotation of zero. Select those keyframes like we've been doing this whole time, hitting F9 and grabbing these things and pulling their handles like this and shoom. And it looks like that. So that is how you do radial things. And the important thing to remember about radial repeaters is you can translate them, certainly, but to do this kind of thing, remember, radial is moving from the center out, so use another property like scale that also works from the center out. So that's just something to think about, I suppose. I mean, if you wanted to go down like an infinite tunnel of this kind of nonsense, you know, you could, uh, let's see here, we can go into that repeater. You could uh, give it like a whole bunch of copies and then just uh, use the offset here to uh, animate through those. Kind of like this. Ah, that's crazy. That's crazy. Stop doing that. Oh, it's time to throw up. Anyway, the point is play around with animating all of the properties of the repeater, not just repeating something that is animating. So you can use the repeater to repeat an object that's animating, but Animating the properties of the repeater itself is going to yield some pretty wacky stuff too, you know? Like, whoa, whoa, what is even happening? Ah, oh, this is crazy. Ah, oh, this rotation. Ah, oh, why is it doing this? Why are these going one way and this ones are going the other way? That's, ah, oh, this is crazy. This is crazy. This is all crazy stuff. Anyway, this is things you can do. You can use this to create crazy patterns, psychedelic stuff. Get in there, mix it up, and uh, have some fun with it. Anyway, this has been Evan Abrams teaching you how to repeat the repeater and hopefully giving you some cool ideas about what to do in your next project. If you like learning about After Effects and motion graphics, then you should definitely subscribe to this channel. I try to post something new every week and it's a lot of fun. If you have questions about this tutorial, leave them in the comments of this video and I'll try to answer them when I'm able. Or if you have questions about After Effects or motion graphics in general, hit me up on the Twitter at EC Abrams or get involved uh, with the Facebook page or the Google Plus page. Links to everything I'm talking about are in the description. If you want to download the file that makes the intro for this thing, then I would encourage you to head on over to evanabrams.com or follow the links on the annotations here to go grab those. And like I said before, if you enjoy what you're seeing, then definitely subscribe because uh, I try to put up new stuff here all the time and people tell me it's pretty good. Anyway, this has been Evan Abrams. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate all the feedback, and I'm glad people are getting something out of this. So, you know, I'll keep making them as long as you keep watching them. 
And yeah, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you around the internet.